Hi everyone, in today's video, I am going to use simple and easy to understand examples to explain what are the threats to the external validity of research design. Why is this important? When you are conducting literature review, you will come across hundreds of articles, many of which you will use as a reference to show an understanding of your theoretical foundation of research. However, when you are reviewing past literature, you must critically analyze it to recognize the threats to its external validity. And similarly, when you are writing up your research report, you must be able to identify what were the threats to the external validity of your own research design. What is external validity? External validity refers to the generalizability of the treatment or the condition outcomes. To simply explain, a study designed with external validity produces results that apply to the threats or to the study's target population. The first threat to the external validity is called reactive effects of testing, where a pre-measure can sensitize participants to the aims of an intervention. What does that mean? Let's say some patients are being treated for common cold using a specific antibiotic. Now, if the patients know that they are going to be administered the antibiotic, some of them will already be expecting an improvement or they might be tricked into thinking that they have improved or they might be pressurized into mentioning or admitting that they have improved because they are aware of the test that they will be going through or the intervention that they will receive through the antibiotic. In that case, this is a bias that has been recognized in an experiment. Respondents in an experimental situation may answer questions atypically because they know they are in the special experiment. The second threat is called interactive effects of selection. This happens when intervention and participants are a unique mixture which can not be found elsewhere. An example of this could be that external validity becomes risky because respondents are tested, surveyed or observed and these respondents cannot be easily replicated or found. This could be part of a tribe that are located in an Amazon forest which not every researcher will have access to or it could be involving the testing of a drug which has now been not manufactured anymore. It has been banned. So the to quote the effects of these studies or to quote the outcomes of these studies in your research study, you need to recognize the threat to the external validity, which means that you cannot generalize the results of these studies to your population or to your research. This has to be recognized. It's okay to quote these research, but you must be able to recognize the threat to the validity or threat to the generalizability of your research findings, of these research findings. Similarly, if you are conducting similar research, which will be difficult for other researchers to replicate in future because of the participants or the intervention that you're using, then you must admit it in your research. You must recognize it in the research. The third threat to the validity or external validity is called reactive effects of innovation. This refers to the environment that sometimes is so artificial that all the research participants, participants are aware that something special is going on and hence they behave uncharacteristically. They become alert to the kinds of behaviors that are expected or favored. They do not behave as they would in their natural setting. So naturally, if participant behavior is being modified or it is not the natural behavior, then the study that you are conducting, the findings that you get out of studying that behavior is a threat to the external validity. It will not be generalizable to other settings. So here these are called non-experimental settings. These are not experimental settings all right? because the participants kind of understand that something is going on, some research is going on. So they behave according to their interpretation of the situation.
the last threat to the external validity is called multiple program interference. It is sometimes difficult to isolate the effects of an experimental intervention because of the possibility that participants are in other complementary activities or program. Now let's say you are trying to use a new learning technique to improve the knowledge of your students. You want to study the impact of your intervention through the new learning technique on the enhancement of knowledge. However, during your research, the students are also going to other classes where the enhancement of knowledge is occurring. The knowledge is adding. You are not being able to recognize this learning effect that is occurring outside your classrooms. Then that is a threat to external validity. You must to recognize it. You need to control for it. So if you can't control for these, you need to recognize it. You need to acknowledge it when you are writing your research thesis or research publication. So guys, this video was about the different threats to the external validity, which specifically refers to whether the findings of a study can be generalizable to the target population in other contexts and settings. My last video was on recognizing the threats to the internal validity. And again, I used simple examples to explain what could be the threats to the internal validity of not only your research, but also the past research that you're reviewing and quoting as a reference in your research studies. Make sure when you're doing a literature review and you are coming across the articles, do a critical analysis to recognize whether those research, the past research had any threats to their internal or external validity, making sure that you avoid similar threats as much as you can in your own research. If you did not watch my last video on recognizing the threats to the internal validity, the link to that video is in the description section below. Please make sure that you watch both the videos to avoid making these kind of mistakes in your research. I look forward to your feedback and comments on what you thought about these videos and whether they are being useful for your learning or not. Bye for now.